By the Light of the Green Star is a science fantasy novel by American writer Lynn Carter. Published by Daw Books in 1974, it is the third novel in his Green Star series. In this installment, other than the one found in the treetop cities such as Phaelan and Arda races of green star planet humans are introduced. Topic. Plot summary As Khan ponders on how to get past Klagon, who Gujan Tor had ordered to kill him in case of failure, Klagon then tells him that they should escape together as Gujan Tor will also kill Klagon, a master assassin even more tortuously, and as Klagon has no wish to kill his only remaining true friend. The two escape on their black-painted Zyphs tethering them a short distance outside Arda as night travel is extremely dangerous. In the morning, they see a flight of Akmim's warriors pursuing the sky sled, which Khan knows they cannot catch, due to its speed exceeding that of any Zyph. When the two set out for Phaelan at a higher altitude, a huge shadow comes over them. Klagon looks toward the shadow's source which turns out to be a dinosaur-sized hawk-like bird or zorkor. They attempt to flee from the Zorkor only to find that its speed exceeds that of their Zyphs. Before fleeing, Khan observes a beautiful, not in a feminine sense, bald, ebon skinned human riding it. At that point, Khan finds the Zukar, an invention of the Kaluda, the lightning emitting wand which Sashimus had used to kill the full, and slays the Zorkor, panicking its rider who falls from its back into the abyss. However, he and Klagon are not able to regain control of their Zyphs till these hit the forest floor, which kills the Zyphs. In the meantime Janchen, Neve and Zarka along with a captive Arjala prepare to restart after a night spent parked. At this point Arjala's haughtiness comes to the forefront as she criticizes the rude breakfast they have. And her feeling of humiliation is aggravated when Neve reminds her that she Neve too is a goddess as princess, goddess are integrated in Phaelan. When they restart the sky sled at high altitude, they see a large floating city from which Zorkor with ebon-skinned riders similar to the one that chased Khan and Klagon flying around it. A flight of the Zorkor lands near the quartet, who are taken captive by the riders and taken into the city. There, an old man tells them the city is named Kalidar, at which Arjala is initially overjoyed. She had earlier welcomed the ebon skinned men as her cousins, though they gave her no recognition, but her joy is turned to horror as the old man, Nimbalim of Yoth, informs her that she is viewed as merely another captive. Neve is thrilled at meeting Nimbalim, whom she had always been told had died a thousand years prior. Even his city had been destroyed sometime later by the Blue Barbarians during one of their madness times. Khan and Klagon have meantime taken shelter, but are disappointed at the forest floor as it provides only some tasteless though plentiful, food items. They are captured by a tribe of albinos who ride on huge earthworms known as sloth and taken into caves in the tree's root networks. There, they meet a blue-skinned man who identifies himself as Delgan of the Isles. The of the Isles particularly intrigues Khan who has lived entirely in the treetops, to whom Klagon takes an immediate dislike. Khan notices that Delgan is rather refined for a blue barbarian, the only race of which he knows having such skin color. 
The troglodytes, led by Gore Yar, add Clagon and Khan to their herd of slave tenders of grubs known as Inum. Gore Yar also warns them that they must keep the Inum safe from enemies he terms Kran. When the Kran hippo -sized red ants later attack the troglodytes and slaughter many of the Inum, Goryar tries to punish Klagon by whipping him to death, but is stopped when Khan thrusts a torch in his face giving him serious burns—for which Khan is sentenced to be killed by the largest of the sloth suggested to Goryar by Delgan. One of the younger of the black men of Kalidar, Ralaju, finds Arjala fascinating. He discusses this with an elder, Klyan, who attempts to dissuade him. The travelers including Nimbalim, plan on escaping Kalidar but are initially stymied by the sky sleds being too small for which Neve finds a solution, capturing and riding one of the Zorkor. Eventually, Zarka is able to tap Ralaju mind and use him to control a Zorkor, on which Neve and Arjala ride with him. The traveler's escape is detected however, and a flight of the Zorkor riders armed with a pain rod less powerful version of the Zukar knocks Zarka piloting the sky sled unconscious. Janshan then takes control and brings the sky sled to a stop. Delgan visits the condemned Khan and gives him his weather cloak, witch light, rapier and zukar, and tells him to hurry so they can escape. As they do so, the troglodytes awaken the huge sloth which pursues the trio. Khan then pushes a button on the witch light, warning Delgan and Klagon to cover their eyes, and turns away. The witch light has one lightning bright flash which kills the huge sloth, but the reflection on the water's surface blinds Khan. The trio escape in a boat made from a fallen leaf to the inland sea, and land on a small isle. Where Delgan strikes Klagon unconscious and robs the two of Weathercloak, Rapiers and Zukar. Mockingly he states, In my land, I am a king, I go to reclaim my throne. Klagon regains consciousness, and he and Khan hear the wings of the Zorkor piloted by Ralaju, now free of Zarka's mind control overhead. Followed by as the green star rises. Topic: External links. By the light of the green star title listing at the Internet Speculative Fiction Database.